Does God speak? <laughs> Does he talk? I mean now, not just that, as if he wrote a good book and then stopped talking. You know? Does he speak? I was convicted by a by a quotation from A.W. Tozer, and I got familiar with him through reading his book called Knowledge of the Holy, A.W. Tozer. It is a devotional, but dealing with the attributes of God. Well, this quotation has to do with, with responding to the Spirit. And I find it very convicting in myself how much my desire to, how strong my desire for spiritual things in my life, or even hearing and desire to hear from God it, it is very convicting. And let me read it to you. Are we raising a whole generation of young men and women without any sensitivity to the voice of God's Holy Spirit? I'm on record, and I will as long as I live, that I would rather lose a leg and hobble along throughout the rest of my life than to lose my sensitivity to God and his voice, to spiritual things. Oh, how I want to keep this, that sensitivity within me, within my soul, I'm thinking about the great throngs of men and women raised in, in Christian homes. They've been brought up in Sunday school. They probably cut their first baby tooth on, on the edge of a hymn book when the mother wasn't watching. Still, to this day, they're not right with God. Some have made it a kind of profession, but have never been able to delight themselves in the Lord. The reason? They've lost sensitivity to the message and the voice of God. If the Holy Spirit cannot move something within us and our being every day, they're not going to be ineffective Christians. if they are Christian at all. That's convicting. So the question is, is that, does God speak? Has he spoken? Does he speak to you, to me? And my heart, our heart sensitive enough to spiritual things or have they come in our lives, well, reading the scripture is no different than reading any other book. Or it's, it's good to read, but, you know, having a conversation with God and that sensitivity to see God at work behind what's going on in, in our world. And I think, I think over a period of time, for myself, it's easy to lose this, that sensitivity to the Lord and what he's saying or wants to say. There's three scriptures I'd like uh, you to um, look at. And I want to ask you the question as I point these out to you. What is the thread that ties them together? The first one is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, let 
there be light. The second one is that of First John, I mean John 1, the second passage. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, all mankind. Light shines in darkness, and the darkness had not overcome it. In verse 14, and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only one, one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Scripture 3, from Hebrews, the first chapter. In past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times in many ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir over all things, through whom he made the universe. We'll pause there. There's something that ties all three of those together. You have an idea what that might be? In the beginning, God said. It is the Word, Jesus himself, the Word through which all things are created. He spoke the Word. He expressed his expression of himself. But God spoke, not just, not just what we say, say in creation or through creation, but he spoke over and over again throughout the scripture. We have individuals, God, way back as, as far as Adam and Eve. Well, what's the scripture say about the relationship that... That Adam and Eve have with God. They, he walked in the garden with them in the cool of the day. That's the relationship. God spoke with them. Over and over again you had different ones that God spoke directly. Either by dream, vision, or directly speaking to them. Such as Abraham. Abraham hears God and his, his idolatry living. And God spoke to him, broke through. You can take all the, all the different ones, Noah, Moses. There was a time at Mount Sinai that, that the rumblings of God's voice was heard from the mountain and People says, well, well, don't, don't, I don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. You, Moses, you talk to God and you tell us. We don't want to hear that. It's, it's terrifying. They decide it. God speaks. And his word became flesh. And as I like the, like the message Bible says, and he moves into our neighborhood. <laughs> I like that. He came to live where we are. Now, this is prophetically speaking from the Old Testament as well. And this scripture that we've mentioned several times concerning Emmanuel, right? A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name 
Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. Now, where does that come from? Where that, that quotation comes from? And if you would join with me, if you want to, it, it's in Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah 7 and the verses 14, but I want to give you the context for that verse. What happens in chapter 7 is that King Ahaz, who's in Judah, finds out and finds out that not only the northern tribe or Ephraim or the northern tribes, because this is after the split in the kingdom. Ephraim comes along with Aram and they're going to come and attack Judah. And God says to Ahaz, don't worry, I got it. And this is what he says to Ahaz. It will not take place, it will not happen, for the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only resin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be, uh, be too shattered to be a people. Their head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Remaliah's son. If you do not, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. So God says, okay, don't worry about Ephraim, that is the northern tribes. Don't worry about Aram, because I've got it within 65 years. Assyria is going to come and take them, carry them away. So don't worry about it. Well, apparently Ahaz is not too sure about the statement from the Lord, his voice, the voice of God. And so the Lord gives him an option here to increase his faith and trust that what he says is going to be true. Verse 10, again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. So what is God telling Ahaz? You, you're, you're not really sure about what I'm telling you is going to happen? Go ahead. You, you, what do you want? I'll, I'll show you whatever you want to show you that what I'm telling you is true. Oh, what, what kind of offer is that, right? How would you like that? God tells you something's going to happen, and he says, okay, now, in order to show that and make sure that you are clear in your heart, you will stand in your faith, ask whatever you want. Ask it to height, what sign do you want? I'll, I'll, sh I'll show it to you, and you'll be fine. Ahaz, you know his response was? <laughs> Even though the Lord's offering him. He says, well, I will not ask. I'm not going to ask for any sign. I will not put the Lord to the test. Oh, well, wait a minute. It, it, it's the Lord's asking. You say, okay, I'll, sh I'll show you something to, sh to increase your faith and, and trust that what I'm saying in 65 years, the northern kingdom's going to be gone. They're going to be carried away by Assyria. And he goes, becomes very religious at this point. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to test the Lord. I'm not going to put the Lord to the test. Well, it's one time the Lord says, go ahead and test me. Right? And this is where that verse comes in. And Isaiah said to her, said, hear now, you house of David. House of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? 
Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. What is God saying to the house of David? Now, this is not, it, it's wider than just what Ahaz represents is the house of David. But this prophecy has to do with David's family. You didn't have a first sign? I'm going to give you one. And the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call him Emmanuel. And what does that mean? God with us. And it's as if to the house of David and to us, that you're not going to ask for a for a sign to increase your faith. So I'm going to give you one and I'm going to show up. I'm coming. God's going to come and the word being flesh dwelling among us. God spoke. God said, I'm coming. I myself will give you that sign. I myself. So here's circumstances, stuff that we're going through, dealing with. And we have this promise that God is with us. So what does that mean to you? Just kind of a general thing, you know? Yeah, God's with me all the time. Yeah, no matter where I go, I, I know that. He's everywhere, right? But there's more of a reality to this. The reality is, it is specific When God says, I am with you, do you think that he's just wound everything up and left? <laughs> like some believe. Get it all started and walk away from it. No. The sensitivity that God is active in today speaking today is where and i think i think more than ever is that sometimes it's like to having to tune into the that radio frequency you know yeah i'm sure everybody's kind of done that you know you kind of fine tuning that's something that we really have to get back to. I don't know. But the promise is, is that the reality is he is and he doesn't lie even when the circumstances change. He doesn't. Even when we change. And I'm, I, I'm thankful for that because God has given us enough space between him and us that we can make even bad decisions. He allows that. But he comes near to us. The first sermon, one of the first sermons that Jesus gave was the same as that of John the Baptist. 
And his first sermon was this. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And the reality of that in our everyday life is that the kingdom of heaven is available. No matter what. Literally, the idea of the kingdom of heaven being near is like the kingdom of heaven is in the room. Here. And what is the kingdom of heaven? It's the rule of God. It's the rule of Jesus. In our lives, over circumstances, over er whatever. Emmanuel. <laughs> how many times have we have kept count today? How many times we use that word? Emmanuel. I think the Lord wants to remind us all <laughs> of that. We're not left to our own selves. And is it possible that we could have a relationship that Adam had? The relationship that Adam and Eve had with, with our father, with God? The scripture says they walked with God in the cool of the day. God is continuing to speak and he has spoken. And he says, I'm coming. I'm going to tie something together here and I don't know how I get to it, but I want to I want to get here concerning God creating and creating us. And his expression of who we are by God's design. And not just us, but all creation. And the greatest word that was spoken. When God said, or through Jesus, the word that was spoken is in our genes, our DNA. It's probably the longest, longest word we could ever be. And what, it, what does it do? What, does D, what is DNA? It's probably one of the longest words ever that God has ever spoken. It's information. That God has put in the DNA his word. That all life itself. Was given information of how to respond. How to grow. How to blue eye, black eye, whatever. Uh, hair, no hair. Tall, size, everything. Trees have leaves. It's all in the DNA that God spoke. And it's the longest word by design in all creation that God spoke through Jesus. God is with us. He created us and made us for himself. For himself. He has spoken. And the evidence of that speaking is in how God has built us and our cells and our DNA. And why did he do that? Because he loves us. He cares about us. God said. Let's pray. Father, we know
and affirm with us in this world that we would see you. See you, that you're behind everything, that you are still working out your purposes no matter what to accomplish your goals, that in our li individual lives, we would glorify you that you have called us and created us to, to be, to give you glory and praise. You created us for yourself. And overall, Lord, you call us to be yours. Remind us every day and give us the desire that we do need, every one of us, a sensitivity, more of a sensitivity to spiritual things, to the voice of your spirit. And no, Lord, as Tozer, Tozer said, that we could, something that we could not live without, really live without your action in our lives. Help us to get that. Help me to get that. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus, amen.